Hello and welcome to your Faith to Go. Uh, today I want to start by reading out of Adam Grant's new book, Think Again, The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know. So listen to this, it says, part of the problem is cognitive laziness. Some psychologists point out that we're mental, mental misers. We often prefer the ease of hanging on to old views over the difficulty of grappling with new ones. Yet there are also deeper forces behind our resistance to rethinking. Questioning ourselves makes the world more unpredictable. It requires us to admit that the facts may have changed, that what we once, what, 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 that what was once right may now be wrong. Reconsidering something we believe deeply can threaten our identities, making it feel as if we're losing part of ourselves. Rethinking isn't a struggle in every part of our lives. When it comes to our possessions, we update with fervor. We refresh our wardrobes when they go out of style and renovate our kitchens when they're no longer in vogue. When it comes to our knowledge and opinions, though, we tend to stick to our guns. Psychologists call this seizing and freezing. We favor the comfort of conviction over the discomfort of doubt and we let our beliefs get brittle long before our bones. We laugh at people who still use Windows 95, yet we still cling to opinions that we formed in 1995. We listen to views that make us feel good instead of ideas that make us think hard. That's a lot, that's a lot. So I read that because it makes sense to me about who we're studying this week. So this week we're continuing our series on how well do you know Peter? And the story that we're focusing around is the one from Acts, where he has vision or an ecstatic experience over and over again, where God is inviting him to eat unclean foods, challenging this incredibly important, long-held, theologically sound uh, understanding about food uh, that his people had had as a way of keeping Israel faithful for a very long time. It went so in depth that you couldn't even go into the home of someone that was considered unclean because of the foods or the, or the clothing they wear, all kinds of things. Like it dramatically affected his life in important ways. And God is inviting him to think again, to rethink this incredibly important belief that will change his life and will change Christianity from that point on. So I find that passage so interesting from the book like again I have no problem buying new clothes I have no problem getting new things for my house but having to really rethink the way I believe that the world is or facts about it or the fact that I may not have all the facts to a story uh, or to an experience or to a way the world works or functions uh, that is so much harder uh, for me to change and shift around. And so that's one of the things we're gonna be considering and contemplating and thinking about this week as we learn more about Peter and about how do we learn to be good at rethinking, at changing our own minds uh, about our faith, about um, who's included, who's not included, about what church can be or will look like in the future. So all kinds of interesting stuff to consider. Uh, but think about how, and especially this idea of doubt, you know, that we would much rather stick to our guns in certainty than live in the discomfort of doubt. I don't know. I think every faith journey should have a pretty heavy dose of doubt in it and should have good hard questions because life is complicated. Uh, there are oftentimes not simple answers uh, to the complicated experiences we have in life. So let's be brave enough to face those complications and ask the hard questions which might require us to rethink and to change our minds. Trusting that God is in the midst of it. I mean, God's the one that points this out to Peter. So uh, let's uh, lean into that, lean into some doubt, maybe lean into some questions this week. So with that, let's go to God in prayer. God, we trust you. We have faith in you. Uh, we're so grateful for your love and your grace for us when we get things wrong, uh, but also that you give us the ability to change. You give us the ability to think deeply about these issues that are so important to you, about how we express your love in the world. What's the best and broadest and most expansive way that we can do that? Um, help us to be brave and have courage that by letting go of certain beliefs, 
that you will offer us something even more beautiful, more uh, broad than we had pictured before for ourselves or for our congregation. We ask all these things in the beautiful name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As always, my friends, be well, be safe. Think about how and what you want to change your mind about.